Hey, uh, just take here with you uh, today to talk about a uh, pressure transducer. I know some guys uh, wonder about these things, but um, we're going to show you today uh, how I made mine and uh, what mine's all about. I'm going to show you what you can use it for. All right. Now, my transducer, I got a nice little box here. Um, and put a nice little label on it. And uh, what we have here is a, um, a pressure transducer. Actually, two pressure transducers. One is a 500 PSI and the other is a 250 PSI. Uh, it's made by MS, MSI, which is Measurements, Measurement Specialties Incorporated. Um, these pressure transducers can be used for a variety of different things. Um, what you have is a uh, is a, um, a plug here, the pressure transducer, there's a, di a diaphragm inside and a quarter inch, this, this thread is quarter inch national pipe thread hooked to a uh, quick coupler so that you can hook it to uh, you know just uh, compression fittings you know your, your compression um, adapter so that you can take uh, measurements uh, inside the cylinder with these uh, pressure transducers so I bought two off of eBay, a 250 and a 500 psi, and um, they these have three prongs, uh, as you can see down in here, and it, and it's just a simple pressure, um, like a TPS, on this. Uh, it's a five volt. You give it a five volt reference, and um, it's got a one to one to uh, I believe it's a one to five volt. Uh, output so it's got a four volt working range from one to five volts so if you have one volt coming out of the sense line that would be zero p psi and if you have five volts coming out of the sense line that would be 250 or full range of the, tr the transducer so um, I had to purchase this plug um, through uh, DigiKey I believe it was 20 bucks but it turns out General Motors uses this uh, exact same plug on a lot of their um, products uh, TPS's um, I, I think some fuel fuel tank pressure um, sensors on some of their cars and that is hooked to a box in which I made this box inside of this box so you would connect you would connect this to that Then you would connect the pressure transducer to to your adapter as such, and it's a lot of connecting. Turn this on, and I have a positive and a negative output, which you would hook your your, your DSO to. So that goes in there, that goes in there, as such, and then this goes to your picoscope. Um, and then you can do a cranking or running compression check. Very useful information can be come can come out of this. I also have an adapter here. This adapter goes inside of these, and this is my um, fuel fuel pressure. Um, I went on uh, MSI's website, and these the diaphragms inside of here are stainless steel, and they can be exposed to lots of very corrosive materials. You know, I don't have to worry about getting, you know, fuel up in there. Is that going to mess up the sensor? The answer is no, not on these, not on these two particular transducers. You know, I can hook them up to coolant, fuel, oil, anything I want, and, and I, there's no damage going to happen to these. Um, I purchased just the sensors by themselves for about, I think it was $80 total off of eBay. And I was real made real, real specific sure that, um, a lot of your pressure transducers out there have a uh, a 4 to 20 milliamp output. You're going to have to do quite a bit of signal conditioning in order to use those tr pressure transducers. I made sh real sure that these had voltage outputs. It was a 1 to f one to 5 volt um, uh, output 
which was linear to the pressure. So I made real specific sure that I could, I could, um, I could actually get these and, and use them. And inside this box, um, what you can't see in there is a 9 volt battery hooked to a 5 volt um, voltage regulator, which you can you can buy all the parts inside of inside the box for about 10 bucks. In fact, the most expensive parts are these two plugs. Um, if you'll notice, they accept the shielded. See how it's got the shielded? They accept the shielded um, banana leaves, so I could use all my existing leads. Um, it's real. It's kind of difficult to find those, and those are about ten bucks each um, for those. But I wanted to be able to use my shielding without having to cut my shields off, which I've had to do in the past on on other, like uh, just for example, this I made this like ten years ago, and these are not. See, you cannot stick these. These will not work because you have to cut the shield off to stick the banana plug down in there. This is a, uh, a a pot pot assembly I have for different values. So, like I said, these are um, you know the most expensive part <laughs> inside this box. So when I turn this on, I I, um, I let power go to the to the uh, plug, and of course you've got to know the pin out from uh, get that from MSI's website. And um, let me give you an example of uh, showing you how these work. Uh, we had a tow in, and I'll show you the Pico uh, output to a, uh, a 2006 Lincoln Town and Country. Okay, now that you've seen uh, my uh, pressure transducer, I'd like to show you a couple instances where we used it on a vehicle. And um, uh, the best one we had a uh, 2006. Um, Lincoln town car come in. There's a crank no start and his vehicle in great condition with like 70,000 miles or something, you know, fairly low mileage. So, um, just from experience, when we cranked it over, uh, it sounded like it didn't have a compression on any of the cylinders. So, we thought this was suspicious. And just as a, a, a pure um, gut feeling, we um, we decided to use the pressure transducers to measure compression, cranking compression. So uh, I don't have any pictures for you of the vehicle, but I just used my setup hooked to, um, I believe it was cylinder five. No, I'm sorry, one cylinder one, and um, we hooked it up. And uh, this this is the waveform that we got. So uh, I'm gonna scroll through. You see here. And uh, over here on the left, the vertical scale here is, is, is calibrated to PSI. You see that? So basically, during the cranking compression test, we got roughly anywhere from, you know, uh, 68 to, you know, 80 PSI. So here, you know, here's an indicator to help give you a scale of what, what the pressure is. So... Um, I felt like this was really low because the crank speed, don't, the, cr the crankshaft's velocity has a lot to do with how much um, air can enter the cylinder. And uh, 77 psi is really low. I just knew that from experience. So what we decided to do was put um, uh, some oil in the cylinder um, just to see if that had any effect on the cranking compression. And sure enough, um, as soon as I put uh, I think I put like three capfuls of the oil, um, the, the little cork, the cap, I put three capfuls, I, I believe is how much I used. And so um, we cranked it and I'm not sure what happened why the uh, this gets offset and it and little cap off here, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. I didn't even notice it during the, uh, during the event, I actually noticed it after, after I recorded the uh, scope shot. So we'll notice, uh, now we notice uh, here on a cranking compression test, um, roughly 200 and, what was that, 221 PSI. So after we saw this, um, you know, from 77 PSI to 221 PSI, uh, it's real obvious the cylinders had been washed down with gasoline, like, flood, like a flood situation. So, um, it, I mean, this took like 
15 minutes to capture these two two um, uh, scope shots and um, immediately I was helping a guy diagnose this one and, and as soon as we saw this he basically went straight over to the vehicle and tried to crank it holding the gas pedal at 100% to turn the injectors off. As soon as he did that and stopped washing the cylinders down it cranked up and uh, basically total time in the vehicle was 30 minutes. So this is one of the examples you can use uh, to, for a pressure transducer to help diagnose vehicles. Okay, I uh, hope this helps out and uh, many, you know, post any comments. Um, I will post more videos probably on my uh, tra pressure transducer, how I built it, and uh, pop, you know, potentially more scope shots. Okay, and um, thanks for watching.